All right, boys and girls, here we are. We are back. Yo, G, the original Grognar, Devin, we are sitting down. We're going to try this live stream thing oh, here, and I know I've done a few times in the past. And it helps if I turn off the volume of my YouTube channel playing in the background. So, uh, Dog, I see you there. Hey, Dog Sidious, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody go check out, if you're a big Star Wars fan, go check out Dog Sidious, good friend of the channel. All things Star Wars, and he's also been doing some uh, Final Fantasy playthroughs, did some Mass Effect playthrough a little while ago. Uh, anyways, so what we got here is... I've wanted to do live streaming for a while, and I've done several times in the past. Well, I haven't done several times, so <laughs> a few times in the past I've done it. I've, it hasn't gone real well. Realized my settings for OBS were all messed up, all for so the settings were off, the scene sets were off, and so I wasn't as happy with my streaming as I could have been. Dug into it a little bit more, figured out what I had done wrong, set up with my streams. So hopefully this is going to work this time because this is a series I'd like to do and continue and play through with. Um, basically what we're looking at is uh, John Tiller Software's uh, the nineteen, the Sea Lion 1940, or Sea Lion 40. Hypothetical invasion of Britain uh, by the German forces in World War II. In uh, the game is set up, it has two different uh, two different invasion time periods. Before you buy invasion and September invasion, and so I've been I've already played through about 33 turns. Uh, about this just starting the fourth day of the actual uh, uh, fighting. Um, I went with the July invasion, and the July invasion actually has four different invasion beach styles are in four in four different options you can choose and I'm going to bring up the jump map real quick and we went I went with the uh, East Angel Anglia East Anglia I'm going to butcher that name I know plus it's you know 10:30 at night so it doesn't help that my mind's not working real well uh <laughs> oh, I have several divisions so you can kind of see this is the southeast part of uh, Britain we have London roughly right here basically all the red are the german forces which i'm playing and the blue forces are the uh the british uh the blue dots are the british forces that i'm able to see We've got fog of war turned on so or you know actual you know i don't know where the enemy's at uh but one of the invasion sites was up here in east anglia uh five divisions on the beach right there and then i had another six spread out Along here, uh, Dover's right about here. Uh, I can't remember what some of the other cities along the coastline are. Um, what am I trying to do with this? Uh, it, you know, I play this all the time. It's easier for me to do a computer game than it is for me to do uh, a tabletop game because I don't have to worry about the rules in a tabletop or in a computer game. I just point, click, go on, do yada, yada, yada. And that's, that's, you know, it's, it makes life a lot easier. Uh, so, that's why I've kind of wanted to do this for a while. Finally got it set up. Finally kind of happy with how it's set up. And I'm sure after I get this all done streaming, I'm going to find a lot of mistakes and hope I can fix that. One of them, I hope, is I've got the sound uh, turned down enough so you guys aren't getting blown out by the sound effects in the background. I know it's getting, it's blowing my ears out, so I'm hoping that I turned it down on your guys' end. Not too bad. Uh, so, all right, so we're stepping into the fourth day, and let's kind of take a look at what we've got here. Oh, you know what, let's go ahead and turn on the name. So people who kind of know uh, Southeast England kind of know where we're at here. So originally, uh, on the first day, you know, this was the main landing site here for the Anglia uh, landing site. Plus, I had a bunch of paratroopers that landed and ended up being spread out all over the freaking place, really. Uh, and then the, these beaches had some landings up here, and I had some commandos landing up here. The original invasion plan, or the original plan, we got, the, got these pink guys right here. Uh, oops. These pink guys right here, it's the uh, 30th Infantry, yeah, 30th Infantry Division. They kind of landed here at Dover Court, and their plan, and it was successful, drive along this road and then hit the uh, hit the town of uh, Colchester from the north. The other major landing site down here was these green guys, which is the 6th Mountain Troop. 
uh, six Gebirgis Jaeger, um, and their plan was to advance alongside the 30th as they advanced in here and here, and I hope you can see the cursor, because if not, it's not making any sense, and advance on Colster, uh, Colchester and, and attack as well. I had some Falsham Jaeger paratrooper units land, these blue guys up here, uh, and they kind of landed in this area around Wix and Great Bromling. And uh, I also had some glider troops. Uh, the 22nd Infantry Division, they landed around Great Oakley, um, and they kind of drove up the road line as well. As well. <laughs> Having three divisions try to advance along two two highways, I, I spent more time playing traffic cop than I did playing anything else. And on the second day of the invasion, I actually got these blue guys here, which is the 7th Panzer. I was not expecting them. The, nowhere in the documentation, documentation that I had for the day I was going to be the 7th Panzer. Uh, so I'm quite happy with them, and I've kind of got them sprung out along a highway, stretching back 20 kilometers. Um, I had some difficulties taking Lawford. Uh, eventually was able to clear it, moved on to Colchester. Uh, it's been... took most fighting throughout the night, and as you can kind of see, I've kind of managed to, to break across most of the bridges. Uh, the British line of defense was kind of along these bridges right here, but they didn't defend this bridge here, and so I was able to pour a bunch of companies and basically outflank them, and once I outflanked them, I was just able to pour across the bridges. So kind of the overall plan is the 30th Infantry Division is going to finish clearing out Colster, and then I'm probably going to push them down here to Mercia Island, or Mercia Island. Uh, the 22nd Glider is going to peel off toward, after Colster's taken, and they're going to peel off towards this way, Halstead, and I don't know how far I'm going to push them over. Uh, Seventh Falschemager up here is going to clear from Boxford to Ipswich and over to Lex. <sighs> you Britons have a lot of weird names for your towns. So Felix Stowe. Uh, I do have some action going on back here with the Harwich uh, ferry system, but... Uh, and the sixth, the sixth Gebirgis Jaeger, sixth Mountain. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They got the crap beat out of them not too long after they landed. They they ran into some really heavy beef on the beach, and as soon as they cleared that, uh, the British Second Armored showed up, and uh, the bulk of the British Second Armored clashed with the sixth Gebirgis Jaeger. And it's really kind of unfair to call the British Second Armored an armored division because they were with the old Mark VI Vickers tanks, which basically had just machine guns. Um, so it was about a two-day battle, um, and the 6th Gebirgis Shaker eventually was able to overcome them, mainly because they had some armor support. There was some, there was some Panzer Jaegers, and I've got some uh, Panzer IVs or Panzer IIIs. Or my pants. So yeah, the Panzer III is right there. That kind of helped knock uh, knock out the second armored, but it 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 forced the sixth Gebirgis Jaeger into having to rest and reply, and they're still recovering. I mean, uh, a few of the forward elements are okay, but you take a look at some of these back elements. Maybe yes, we've got fatigue built up, and so they've been kind of out of the fight for the last couple three days. Yeah, 185 fatigue built up. And, 46 fatigue and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's what the status is with that right now. Oops. Uh, come on, people. I see a bunch of you in the chat. Go ahead and sing out. I know Dog City has said hello. So, um, yeah, it's just going to be me playing the game. I figure, you know, one or two turns at a time. Takes me about a half hour, 45 minutes to return. May, well, maybe not quite that long. But, you know, it's something I've wanted to stream. I wanted to get back into streaming for a while. So here we are, and I should probably just shut up and start playing a turn. Now, if you kind of take a look, this the entire game covers a very, very massive area. One, one, uh, one hex is one mile, one kilometer. One mile, one mile. Um, so you can kind of see... Let me turn off the names. So you can kind of see how far and how spread out my troops are everywhere. You know, sometimes people say, well, how do, how do you control such large formations over such wide territory and be able to keep it all straight in your mind? 
And see, we have London over here. So, yeah, so London's over in the area right here. Oh, well, basically, I break it down into... Uh, actually, you may not see that jump map. I'm not sure if you see the jump map. Anyways. Um, I basically break each division down into kind of its own scenario. I, I have an overall guiding arc of where I want each of the divisions to go, what I want to do with them. But I basically break it down into, all right, each division is its own little, its, its own little game. And that is, I'm able to compartmentalize it. And it's like, all right, this division has this goal, and I need this division that's supporting alongside of it to support them, so they need this goal. And as long as I keep with the kind of the basic overall goals I have with it, it's actually very easy to compartmentalize how the overall flow of the battle goes, and I don't get overwhelmed. Which it also means it's very easy for me. It's like, all right, I start with this division, this division, this division, so on and so forth. Down the, uh, uh, just pretty much down the line. So let's go ahead and start playing. And like I said, we're taking the seventh Falschemagers paratrooper unit and uh, pushed through Lawford, and I want to reach eventually get down towards a Sudbury and have them kind of secure this northern flank up here. It's very small divisions, Falschemagers, light infantry. But I also want to clear out everything back here, and as you can see, there are. British troops back here that I have to deal with, so I'm probably going to take them sweeping westwards originally, clear out the British troops over here, and then back westward, and then go form up a defensive line around Sudbury, Burris, Wakes, Khan. That's the plan with them. We'll see what actually happens. So, what have we got? Uh, we got some Panzer, Panzer Jaeger 1 Battalion, you know, British Infantry Headquarters. Uh oh, they're not disrupted. They are disrupted. I got commandos there, broken British unit, artillery. All right, well, let's just go ahead and start moving these guys towards Sutton. Found some infantry. Okay, knock out some guns. And like I said, I really hope that that sound is not blowing your ears out because uh, override what I'm saying. So if anybody in the channel, if the sound is sounding good, uh, let me know if it's too loud, then I'll just turn all the sound effects off. And I may turn all the sound effects off anyway. A loud and annoying ear. Uh, and, oh, jeez. It's a unit from the 30th Infantry. I need to get them back the other way. Ah, broken. That's good. Push, uh, oh, those guys are disrupted. Can't move from zone of control to zone of control. So since they're disrupted, pull them back to give them a chance to try to recover. There's the headquarters unit, anti-aircraft unit, them in the back. Got a machine gun company and a false American battalion. Push up this railroad, I think. Work on those engineers. Ah! Oops. Didn't want to move that headquarters and that aircraft gun up. Yeah, but that's fine. I'll just move them back next turn. Take these Panzer Jaegers and knock on that headquarters unit. You can. I, the best way to knock out enemy formation. Anybody who's played John Tiller or knows anything about John Tiller pretty much understands that all the games are basically the same engine. Scales may be different, time periods may be different, but if you understand the basic concepts of them and understand the basic concepts of them all, uh, for for the Panzer campaigns and a lot of the other games, you don't want to get into gun duel just sitting back blasting away at each other from a, from a kilometer away. What you want to do is you want to do close assaults. That's what you want to get into their hex and you want to assault them. And the easiest and best way to do that is make sure they're disrupted beforehand because then they're, then if a unit is disrupted, their attack value is like quartered, so it makes it a lot easier to assault. So a lot of the goal of the game is just trying to disrupt the enemy units so you can close assault them to push them back and cause grievous casualties to them. 
So we got some artillery here, so drop some artillery on that headquarters, see if we disrupt them. And of course, since these are false Jaegers, I mean the biggest artillery they have is like a 75 mil. I've got some 81 millimeter mortars from their higher core that I've attached to. Uh, then I've got some Pack 36s. And actually, I don't even think those are Pack 36. Yeah, those are 37 mil. Uh, yeah, those are Pack 36. Still not broke. These guys, I wanted to have as assault, but that's 500 men at XX. That means he's got under, he's any got anywhere from 11 to 99 men in the headquarters unit, so they're not very good on that. Goodness. Push these guys back. Yeah, all right, well, there you go. Part of the fog of war, I didn't know how many men were in the company, but I just pushed into there, eliminated them, and caused 15 casualties. And I was able to eliminate them. So, with fog of war on, it could have been 11 men, could have been 99 men. XX designate. If we take a look at this engineering unit right here, he's got three X's right there. It means he's got over 100 troops in that hex or in that unit. Don't know exactly how many, but so it's it's kind of a little bit of fog of war. I was able to push up there, there the rest of the battalion start following up behind put him in travel mode so we move further yeah moving into cities don't get to move very far yeah All right, let's see. And this is part of the division as well fatigue 42 I don't like doing a lot if their fatigue is over 50 I like this guy. He's got a fatigue 100. I think I'm. Should I move him up to get him closer? Or should I get him back to bleed off that? Yeah, we'll keep keep bleed. 56. Fatigue. Engineers back here. Yeah, 208 fatigue. Fatigue is bad because for every 100 points of fatigue you generate, it decreases your morale level by one. So if you've got 208 fatigue, that drops his morale by two, so his morale is currently D, where normally it starts off at B. And morale is very important and it determines how good you are able to stay in combat. Um, all right, so let's go back here. Harwich, they got a lot of broken, disrupted guys, isolated. Yeah, you know, probably gonna have to have this pioneer come back. And they're gonna try to take the ferry to get over here to reinforce. Low ammo, yeah, I don't, 204 fatigue, yeah, I don't want to do it. Pull those guys back into the bunker. Pull those guys into a trench line. Hey, found a headquarters. So, anyways, that's going to be the 7th Fall Schumacher, so let's go ahead and take a look. 30th Infantry Division, trying to clear out Colchester. These pioneers, isolated, but they're hanging out in a bunker. It's been really hard. Plus, I've been trying to do river assaults across. So it's been really hard. Okay, thank you, dog. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so I guess tuning the sound. Okay, I was able to figure that out. Uh, so we get these engineers that are dug into these bunkers. At least a hundred of them in there. So, and I've been having a hard time trying to break them because while well, they're in a bunker, got some Pack 36 and some anti-tank guns. Go ahead and open fire with them. Anti-tank guns tend to be good against bombers. Sometimes. So now the problem is none of these other troops. All all combat units have a hard val hard attack value and a soft attack value. Soft attack values, of course, you know their rifles shooting at soft targets like light trucks, vehicles, infantry, uh, anti-tank guns, field pieces, and like that. Hard attack value is when you're going up against armor, tanks, and pillboxes. This is 1940. The Germans don't have much. Of, well, nobody has much in the way of a hard attack value at range. So the only way to really take out the bunkers is either use artillery pieces, got a bunch back here, uh, anti-tank guns, tanks, or assaults. And that can get very 
expensive, <laughs> troop-wise, but got to try to clear these out. They are isolated, so that's going to push those two guys in there. Get his defensive fire. Yeah, same. He killed three of my guys. I get, well, he wounded three of my guys. I wounded two of very slow going trying to take out bunkers with him up there so even if I wanted to shoot at him yeah it's going to tell me maximum range is by one hex is a hard target I, I can't shoot into it with any tanks although I do have tanks here but they're disrupted low ammo oof massive nine. I had him fighting through the night fight through the night really 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 jacks up your fatigue. So oh, I've got these guys. Okay, they're isolated. Got off this big old stack of bricks that I back. Let's go ahead and assault here to try to knock them out. Since they're isolated, they shouldn't be able to retreat. So I've got zones of control. Each 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 unit exerts control in six X's around it. Um so technically these engineers are exerting zone of control here. This infantry here is exerting zone of control into these woods. So hopefully he can't retreat into a zone of control. So hopefully that will prevent them from retreating. So I've got him cut off in kind of a little pocket there. And yeah, there we go. Yeah, so I took 13 casualties. I inflicted 273. But, you know, he's got several battalions of infantry. Several companies of infantry, uh, or <laughs> the remnants of several companies. So it's probably going to take me another couple, three, try to work. But once I did the follow up fire, and what? Yep, that's firing. Generally, all units, if they sit still and don't do anything, they can fire it three times a turn. If they assault, they can usually... The assault will either take up all of their fire, or they'll get a chance for one other fire. Uh, disrupted units can fire, but they fire like a 25% effective. And this is urban warfare, so... You know, you can see right here is the hex they're in. If they're in that. Oh no, they're in the clear. Uh, so that that's good. Well, not bad. <laughs> and if you kind of look, whenever you're shooting at a hex, it kind of gives you a list of all the units that are in there. So you've got the icons for infantry, infantry engineer, headquarters, infantry, infantry. That D means they're disrupted. And then, you know, the unknown sub-command, but they are the you know, 55th Infantry Division, or not 11th Corps Field Force, Eastern Command. But again, you have these X's. If the of War is turned on, you don't know exactly in there. So each one of those double X's, like I said, could be anywhere from 11 to 90 men. Or 11 to 99 men. Six more. But, uh, let's see, that headquarters, 15th Infantry Division, they're disrupted. So those two units are going to go ahead and vault. Oh. Odds. Yeah, so they were able to push them back. Only inflicted three casualties on them, but we were able to push them back. And more, more often than not, you want to get good at learning how to push the enemy back and push them into places where you can cut them off and destroy them in piecemeal. Uh, so anyway, so that's mostly the fighting in Colchester right now. I do have these two units down here kind of covering the bridge. Uh, there. And then I've got these reserve, the rest of the division following on behind. And I think, yeah, they're... We'll go ahead and start shifting these guys 
No, no, no. I want to go... Which way did I want to go? I guess it really doesn't matter. No, okay, we'll push the 30th entry this way. Oh, no, not even towards, towards Blackwater. We'll have the 22nd Infantry. They're lighter. They're kind of lighter. We'll have them come down here. So, yeah, I, I, I changed my mind quite often. <laughs> what I'm going to do tactics-wise. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, ooh. Pioneers. Pioneers are combat engineers. They have flamethrowers, demolition charges, stuff like that. So they're really good for assaulting pillboxes. So we'll move them over there so they can help attack those guys in the bunker next time. Guys down here. Uh, bicycle troops. Lots of bicycle troops. 108, yeah, I don't like having units for that have to be We'll keep him sitting there resting. Okay. Headquarters. Guys. More bicycle troops. Yeah, Anti-tank guns. And them back there. Yeah. 37, 300. Okay. We'll just kind of tighten up the line with the rest of the division. Those guys. So basically, we just kind of got the artillery, artillery of the division left. Um, let's take the big guns. I think those are 105 millimeters. Blast away with those bunkers. Oh, he doesn't. Fire. That's 75 millimeter. That's not going to do shit against the bunkers. Catch the infantry in the open. All right, so 30th Infantry Division is done. And like I said, I break it down into little scenarios. So what's next? Now let's move on to the 22nd Infantry Division. Now the 22nd Infantry Division, the green guys here, can't really do anything until I've, until I've cleared out Colchester. I don't want to get into a freaking traffic jam. Because that's uh, it's, it's, it gets really expensive. Lots of units, same hex. And when you've only got one or two rows to move five divisions down, you kind of start to get real good at uh, at traffic control. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna move do anything with the twenty second, which is fine because the twenty second, a lot of their units, I think some of their their backer or more rearward units, uh, looks like they've actually been bleeding off most of their fatigue. Yeah, we'll just keep we'll just keep them in position. It's fine. We don't need to move them. Um, again, I can't do anything until we clear our culture. And the reason being, go ahead and remove all the units. You've got this this, this major river right here, which can only be crossed at bridges. And all the bridges there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inside Colchester. Um, so, and I didn't realize this when I first started making all my battle plans, um, but the, the, it's it's a it's a real nasty choke point. So, I'm like, ah, all right, twenty seconds not going to be able to do much. I've got some higher core attached units. They're not going to do anything. Uh, Seventh Panzer is definitely not going to do anything. I am not going to move them until I break out of Colchester. So their 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 plan with Seventh Seventh Panzer eventually. Come down through Calvindon, head on to uh, Clinsford and Great Battery, and eventually start working my way this way to try to strike at London from the north. We'll see how that goes. Supported by the other three divisions in the area. Uh, so what else do we got? Basically, it's it's yeah, that's six Gebirgshig, six Mountain troops. They're they again, they're just gonna sit here and. I don't really want to advance them or move them until I get Colchester cleared out. I don't want to get into traffic jam. So, like, hey, you guys are taking a little bit of a break right now. The brown units are the higher core. It's the 20th core, no, a 10th core, which is the overall uh, command for the divisions in the area. And they have their own like, pioneers, they have artillery, some, some armor, like from the uh, Panzer threes here, the, the brown units, the higher command. Um, 
move these guys now they can a little bit. Move a few units up. For higher core units. 88 millimeters. I mean, really good anti tank guns, but we're not running into anti tank guns right now, so reason to move them forward. So, yeah, that's all oh, I got these guys down. Start pushing them forward a little bit, get them reconnected closer with the rest of the 6th Mountain. Uh, then, they, yeah, that's pretty much, like I said, you break it down into small little sectors. You had the Falschemakers up here, they did their little thing. At the 30th Infantry here at Colchester, they did their thing. And because Colchester's not cleared yet, 22nd, 7th Panzer, 6th Burgersager, they can't do anything. So let's go ahead and move down to kind of further uh, southeast Dover area. Now, the division that we're dealing with next is uh, the 1st uh, mountain troops, first Kaburgus Jaeger, they kind of landed right along here, along these beach lines, and their goal was to try to take, drive north, capture Dover, because they kind of need Dover's port for supplying the German troops. Uh, but they also, they also want them to drive north. Basically, with the, with the five division, five or six divisions I have landing down here in the southeast corner, each one of them is driving north as far as much as they can till they get to uh, the Thames estuary and then turn westwards and then strike at London. I have a feeling that's probably not going to work well because I'm going to run into a lot of divisions using the same road networks. So basically right now I've got the first Burger Shager still trying to take over after four days. The, the, the British have put up a very, very spirited and very decent defense. There was a lot of British troops here. Uh, now, granted, they were all uh, uh, training troops and uh, raw recruits with outdated equipment, but there was a lot of them in the area. There was a lot of defense positions, and basically, it's taken me. You know, I was expecting to take a cliff on the by uh, the second day, and here it is. I just took it yesterday. So I mean, I was expecting to be in Dover you know, two days ago, but that hasn't happened yet. So the, the British, granted, I've, I've kind of shattered their lines and pushed them back now, but if you kind of take a look at all the German units I've got there, fatigue is just, you know, a lot of their units of fatigue are well over 100. And it's going to take me a couple, three days to bleed off that fatigue to get the division in fighting formation. But I've got to capture it over. It's very important, if you take a look, supply source. It's an 80 supply source, uh, which is... 80 out of 100. Uh, I don't know exactly how specifically the exact supply lines work or supply works in this game, but basically, if it's a supply of 80, that means every unit has an 80% chance of being supplied if they can draw a supply line. To so, yeah, I know. I should probably know the supply rules a little bit. Eh, that's the basics of it. Eh, fine. It's important. I need to capture it. So, we've got the... So these yellow guys, the... First mountain troops, but I do have some core units. Uh, these purple guys are higher core level, they're 13th core. And I've kind of got the division spread out way wider than I want to. These guys up here are out of command, I know that. But I needed to have kind of a defensive screen up here because most of the division has been. Uh, dealing with the British troops right around here trying to capture Dover. As soon as they capture Dover, I'm probably going to have to put the division basically asleep for a couple days to, while they rest, recover, and uh, recuperate a little bit. Then drive them north, you know, catch, capture Ramsgate, Margate, and then... Uh, but, uh, yeah, the simple fact that the British have dealt them such stinging losses definitely slowing down my time to see if we can get into Dover. Uh, got some flame panzers here, so let's move the tanks up first. Yep, Eastern Command, so there's a com at least a company of infantry, in or at least right there. So, up. Oops. Oh, they're in a bunker. Crap. As you can see, a lot of bunkers that I've had to fight my way. And these green, the green counters are... French lines, and then 
Well, the yellow ones are Foxhole. Uh, at Crusader 7777. Seven. Glad you're here. Glad you could join us. And yes, this is uh, this is John Tiller. This is uh, the same guy who did the uh, campaign series back in the 90s for Talon Soft. And honestly, his engine hasn't changed that much. You know how to play the campaign series, you know, basically how to play all of his games. Um, the graphics in the campaign series were a lot better. The 3D. 3D graphics were much better. I hate the 3D graphics. You know, this is basically the 3D graphics for this. I just it just looks like crap. He didn't worry about doing much with the 3D graphics and everybody played in the 2D graphics. But yeah, this is this is John Tiller software. Um, his engine, like I said, his engine just has not changed in you know 20 years of playing. Uh, okay, so we've got these British units here that are. Well, they're not even isolated. All right. So sometimes it's a little bit of a puzzle how you got to clear the flanking units or units on the flanks to be able to get around to cut off the enemy. So, and I typically don't like war games that are puzzle games, but sometimes you just gotta go. With it. So both of these guys are disrupted, so they're fighting a quarter strength. So we'll go ahead and take these. Yeah, look, 171, 15, 150, 123. Uh, they've got like 80 men each in there. Yeah, I mean, the, both of these both of these companies are 43, 44% rank. It's going to take me a while to get these guys even reasonably back up to decent. Yeah, that's it. So right there, I took four casualties, lost one vehicle, but I inflicted, and I only did six casualties in, but I pushed them back. And that is that's what I wanted to do. I want to push them back. You get on the flanks. You push the flanks back. You roll the flanks. You cut them off. Once you cut them off, you can destroy them peacefully. <sighs> Those engineers are disrupted. We don't want to do anything with them. Yeah, let's go ahead and take these guys up here. Just to deal with him so I don't have to worry about my flank too much. Uh, these guys up. Take some defensive fire. As you can kind of see, I'm really closing in on them. <laughs> I'm making hand motions on the map. Not like you can see what I'm pointing at. But right here at Temple Yule, I'm, I'm I'm rolling their flanks back. These this this stack right here will continue to push this stack back towards Dover, while you know the couple of units this, this pioneer will probably work their way around and cut off these uh, these these three British units here. In the same way, you know I move around the southern flank, and you know just just work on rolling the flank and. Trying to uh, cut off the enemy because that's the easiest way to destroy units you know, is by assaulting them when they don't have any way. They... Uh, 129. That's been there. Bleed off fatigue. Bleed off. I'd love to move those Panzers up. Those Panzer three. 126 fatigue. Those Pioneers up. Some Stugs, <laughs> two Stugs and one Panzerjäger trying to bleed off their fatigue. Uh, as well. and move him up to kind of secure. Because we've got this... Uh, I have no idea what that is, but that, that that's a fresh battalion. And I don't want to... Because really the only thing I've got up there protecting that flank is uh, ten Flachwagens. So I do need to kind of reinforce up there. I have no idea what they're going to do with this battalion. They've sat there for a couple turns, and it's a fresh battalion. I mean, it's untouched, so I don't know if it's it's not part of the First London or the Home Counties Guards. So I have no idea who they are, and I don't want to find out who they are yet. But I need to get some more to protect that flank. As you can kind of see, I've got got kind of a thin line right here, at least along the major roads, kind of protect that flank right there and I've got up. Where do I want to put that? Let's go ahead and leave 
there and have for right now. Uh, it's the headquarters, anti-aircraft guns, 58 now. You go off. Or. Drive these guys north. Oh. Those guys. Oh, he's fine. Got his feet down. Artillery pieces are good, so I don't want this hammer Dover. Oh, range exceeded by two hexes. Alright. With the artillery pieces, you gotta put them into travel mode, which is basically hooking them up to their vehicles, and then move them. And then once they get into position, it takes a turn or two to get them set up. So you kind of really gotta think forward ahead with your artillery. Night dog! Take it easy, man. Uh, but we do have these artillery pieces here. 75 millimeters. That's not gonna so long we'll Go ahead and hit those guys there, though. Five men. Now I've got these guys out here, uh, the core units out here. I I don't. I I'll be honest. I haven't really, really got there. It was the, the first day invasion. And they just kind of showed up there. There's no beaches here for them to land on. They're not glider troops. Commandos. I have no idea how they ended up there, but they ended up there. So basically, that's the 30th infantry. Oh, we gotta. Yeah, we'll get them closer. He's got a fatigue of 136. I don't want to get him closer. And that is basically the 30th infantry. So again, take a little chunk at a time. 30th, or not 30th, first, uh, first Gebirgsjäger. They've got the objective of Dober, and to do that, they need to, to kind of secure their northern flanks because we are going to be advancing up towards Canterbury. Soon. So again, that was the little, little scenario. Their designated area. Done with that. All right. So now we can move over to the next infantry, which is the 17th infantry. And we do have some units, some British units that are here. Go ahead and take care of them. Again, we'll try to get around the around the British lines, flank them, isolate them. So these guys are probably going to go pop this. This is just do one assault and over there. Yeah, eight men. Didn't think I needed to commit both units, which allow me. Yeah, he's got to let him get off a little bit. Got these guys up here to do now, so go ahead. Again, it's kind of like a little puzzle game. But take these guys, yeah, they're just have them assault. Okay. Since there were allied units that were right next to them, pushed them back into here. Problem is, if I take this stack and this stack and assault here, they'll just be able to retreat to that hex. We don't want them to retreat away again. Try to isolate them. Let's go ahead and take these guys. Ah! That's one of the problems I have in Fog War. Oh, that's a fresh duty. Uh, and I don't have the movement point to get out of uh, get out of travel mode. You always take more. You always take more care. travel mode because you're in column formation or line. Form. Actually, not, you know what? Shoot up, shoot at them. That's kind of fresh unit. Yeah, I disrupted them. Yeah. If you notice, I'm kind of doing some pretty impressive casualties. Twenty men, thirteen. If you overstack a hex, you have the. Uh, if you overstack a hex, you're going to take more casualties. Each hex can have 500 points worth of uh, of units in it and basically one man or no not even 500 it's probably less than 300 i think uh each man represents one point and each vehicle is 10 points you go over the 300 and you can kind of tell by if you click on your hex and then right click on it kind of hard to see with this background but you see it says 354 x it means there's 350 points worth of troops in there x means it's overstacked so that means i will take 
disproportionately more casualties when they shoot at me in this hex just because there's more troops packed into that space. Conversely, he's got two companies of at least 100 men in there and upwards of 99 in this company. So he's overstacked. We saw, we know that he's overstacked because he was taking more casualties shooting at him. And we continue shooting at him. And again, I always want to disrupt the enemy. If there's, a, if there's a fresh unit and a disrupted unit, my choice is I'm always going to shoot at the fresh unit. Disrupt him. I disrupt him. Combat capabilities is less. Combat capabilities are less. To him. And see, so that, that right there, those two companies started off uh, as fresh units. They weren't disrupted, but just through sheer weight of fire that I threw at them. I managed to disrupt him, which is good. Because as I said, that reduces combat capabilities to 25% normal. All right, so not there. But what are my overall sitting? Vision is, do I want 17th or do I want 35th? Which one of these two divisions do I want to capture? Actually, I think I will continue committing uh, 17th Infantry. But I do have this infantry here. I have to get it. I do. Our elements, what we've got, the artillery. Not yet. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and put these guys into travel mode. Let us continue being a little bit risky and pushing on as fast as we can to the city because we've got a column of troops from the 17th Division approaching back like 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. Uh, so we can have these lead elements continue on and have the follow up units. You know, take care of those British units. In theory, anybody who's ever been in the military, combat will tell you no plan survives first contact. So I may have an idea of what I want to do, but as soon as the bullets start flying. Travel mode. Actually, we can take these units over here because I pulled them off to Y had some Y and Kennington had some defenders that I was able to take out the previous day, but I got those two. And just take these two other companies. And get them moving up. Try to flank these. British units here. It's 132. We're going to hold on to them. Vehicles in. Just to give them some extra support up there. Yeah, these guys are going to that way as well. Now, I don't ad admit or claim that I'm really good at the Tiller games. Uh, Panzer campaigns. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about them, and I kind of, kind of think I know, and I kind of bumble my way through. Uh, so I wouldn't call myself great at this. I wouldn't even call myself good at this game. However, I enjoy it. It is a game that I was willing to, that I enjoyed enough when I first picked up, and I was willing to put in the time to dig into the under the hood mechanics of the game that. I mean, I know there are better players out there than me, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that I'm doing wrong, but at the end of the day, I don't care. I'm having fun with what my knowledge is, and I have gotten better, you know, compared to when I first started playing the games in the series. I mean, Command and Supply, for the longest time, Command and Supply were the two things that just bamboozled the hell out of me. I'm still not real real good on the supply but the uh, 
the command and control I'm a little bit better at. Do we got any more guys? Nope, that's all for that division. So let's go ahead and move to 17th. Is it 17th? No, it's the 35th. Now, the problem is we got some... Oh! Vickers. <laughs> All right, so sometimes you can kind of tell, even though Fog of War is funny, you can kind of tell what the unit is by clicking on them. You can kind of see the portrait. So, and that's the portrait for the uh, Vickers Mark VI. So I know those aren't really heavy tanks. However, I don't have much in the way of anti-tank support over here. So these may be light tanks with machine guns on them. I'm still going to get hurt badly by because I don't have any tank. I don't have any anti -tank. Let's pull these guys. But, <clears throat> second New Zealand. Oh, ooh, New Zealanders. Okay, that's cool. I have any anti tank gun. Ugh, I don't. Oh, no, there's part of the. Those guys moved up. Where are my anti-tank guns? Way back. No, those are flag guns. Artillery. Uh, no. Oh, come on. I gotta have some anti-tank guns. Ah, those are all anti-aircraft guns. Artillery. Oh my god, does this division not have any organic anti-tank? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Okay. We've got some 37 millimeters and 47 millimeters. You know, 12 kilometers away. Oh, I do have some tanks here. Okay, so I do have a few tanks. Yeah, four flame panther or four fa four flame panzers and four studs, which honestly is probably more than enough to take care of those marks. But I got to get them. The uh, first Canadian Infantry Division pushing him back. <laughs> I need to get these guys. Oh, and I, okay, so I got some studs and some panzer gear. Oh, first Canadian. Crap. Problem is the first Canadian infantry. Alright. <clears throat> first Canadian infantry division, historically, was... Uh, probably the best equipped division that, that they had on the British Isles at the time. Because you got to remember, this is two months after Dunkirk, and you know, most of British heavy equipment was left on the beach of Dunkirk. So, yeah, I'm afraid of the Canadians. <laughs> I've got to deal with them. Oops. That's what I get for playing at you know, 11 o'clock at night. I hit the wrong. Let's keep pushing the division up. Yeah, kind of got this division over here heading towards Maidstone. That means I can take this division and kind of flank them back, look them back towards the. It looks like the Canadians and the New Zealanders are going to be up in this area. Ah, whoops, 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 whoops. And a good thing you can always put that there. Ah, Canadians again. Crap, I'm fight. I am in for a f Don't need to get those guys on the line, so I'll pull them off the road. Until I see some armor show up. Very, very slow moving with... I mean, it's not good tank country at all. Though so probably not a good... Probably a good thing I don't have a lot of tank. As you can tell, I mean, orchards, fields, woods, streams all over the place. I am really reduced to use a road network. And that usually means I'm reduced to two, three, maybe four hexes a turn.
Yeah. <laughs> Long ass column. Got anything in the back with that division? Nope. Oh, good. Done with that. Move on to the next one. Now, Maidstone, I have a feeling. As you can see, this is a major river with a few bridge crossings. I'm going to guess Maidstone has got some defense and some defenders in it. So, trying to form up kind of a line of troops before I make an advance. I think what we want to do is come down here towards the test stone. Try to flank that way. There's no real easy way for me to get over to Beard Stick. Like, peel off from here and go all the way around. That's probably going to take me several, at least three turns. I may do that. I may peel a few units. Okay, so no, there's no entry. Headquarters, headquarters. I just like to have two units in each axe. All right, that was again unexpected. Ran smack dab in the first Canadians. I should have known. First Canadians here, first Canadians there. Should have but, you know, this is the face palm recon. I don't have any recon units, so we're just gonna face plant ahead. And see what we're gonna run into. But hey, it's 1940. What do you expect? Now this this is of course the line was a completely hypothetical. I mean, there's been debate since World War II if the Germans could have ever actually practically pulled it off. I don't think they could have. It's they would have had to have started preparing by building landing craft and landing ships in 1936. When Hitler gave the order right after Dunkirk for the invasion of the islands, the truth of the matter was Germany just didn't have the shipping and the landing craft and the barges to be able to put enough divisions onto the, and onto the British beaches. And if you also take a look at it, even capturing all the docks in the, in the, in the, in the landing area at their daily maximum capacity the docks could not have supported the invasion i mean as the germans would eventually find out when they went into russia it would it would usually consume each division required about 1100 tons of supplies a day and i think even capturing dover folkestone you know Eastbourne, the capacity was nowhere near you know, Ramsgate, Margate, even capturing all those, it still would have, I think they, if I remember correctly, they still would have, that would have only given them about half of their daily allotments, just what the docks could offload every day. And of course, everybody said, well, the Luftwaffe, yeah, well, the Luftwaffe didn't do crap at Stalingrad, and they even had worse air capacity. So, from a supply standpoint, the invasion could never have been sustained if it had gotten off. Plus, you also have that, you know, the, the, the pesky royal home fleet that could have uh, sortied from Scapa Flow. And there, you know, there's been debate, well, would the, would the Royal Navy have actually put the, their big ships, their battleships, their heavy cruisers into the English uh, Channel, which was heavily mined and kind of a little bit dangerous to navigate at the time. I think they probably would have just on the chances of stopping 
the, uh, the, the, the German supplies. So, it's, it, yeah, the sea lion was a fanciful, it, it could have never really happened. But you know what? It's a fun scenario to play through. Uh, what do we got here? Over to the next division. All these guys. Yes, we moved all those guys. E 34th. And there were some units from the 1st Armored Division that we caught up here. Caught the battalion of their armor. And I had lots and lots of troops in the area, so it was relatively easy to cut them off. destroy them in peace. Want to face palm my armor into the deep of Turnbridge Well. Get some infantry moving up there. Do we want to face palm with pioneers? No. And of course, since this is 1940, most of the German forces are leg infantry, so they don't move very fast to begin with. So even with the road networks, I'm still only making, you know, at most four or five hexes a turn. And each turn is two hours. Now, granted, I mean, you know, I've got these great bicycle troops, but they're even less armored <laughs> with, with firepower than the normal infantry. Let's see. I think we can break the division up into two columns. One of them to approach Turnbridge Wells from east, the other to approach from. That's a good. I like this. And again, like so many other times, I end up playing traffic police. Try to get the divisions all moving in a timely manner. Let's just leave that armor there. Yeah, the forward elements may get to move three or four hexes, but with traffic jams and everything else, you know, we'll be lucky if the rest of the column... Oh, airstrike. Uh, the RAF is still out there and still active. Bombing my troops. Fairly certain I've got for you back here. Just not. Oh yeah, here they are already. Ah, yeah, 210 fatigue. 68 fatigue will keep blood burning off the fatigue. And you know, it's also a good idea to keep a few guys in the backfield. The British have got partisan units that are starting to pop up everywhere. That's a pain in the ass to deal with. All right, next division. All right. Ugh, yeah, red. <laughs> So, for a real fight. This division, yeah, because this is part of, these guys down here are core elements and part of this division up here. I was able to get a couple units up to Crowbar. My point was, I had these guys in two columns originally moving to Lamhurst and Crowbar, and I really should not have spread them that far apart. However, I needed to because the division over here on the far left flank, oh, is that the 22nd? Yeah, 26th Infantry. Uh, since they're the extreme left of the, of the advance, I need to have them anchor themselves as a defense and kind of act as a shield so I don't get flanked. Um, but I was also thinking maybe I can continue the advance alongside, you know, the, their sister division right next to them, 34th. However, it didn't work out that way. This division is not that big to begin with, 
and most of it is trying to push over here to the Ois River, because, you know, a river. Kind of hard to attack across a river, except for the bridges. If I can secure those bridges, that secures this entire flank of the invasion. Um, so the plan was both divisions to advance side by side while the green guys were to form, form the flank. Didn't work out that well, so the 34th had to expand their frontage, and that's when I stuck my dick in a hornet's nest by running into the 1st Canadians here at Hadlow Down and Mayfield. And, and to see, you know, 20 kilometers separating the two columns of the division, and these guys are dealing with the Canadians. Did manage to get some troops into Crowbar, but about two turns after that, Canadians just came sweeping down through here. <laughs> These guys dug into Crowbar. It's like, no, we're not moving. We're not going anywhere. Hold until relieved. Hold until relieved. And, you know, you've got wooded terrain, so it's going to be hard for me to get around and flank them. But, you know, I'm going to have to try to do it. Take those guys up. Artillery's not set up yet, or two up yet. Oh, that is. Uh. Let's see, yeah, these guys shouldn't even be attacking Canadians. I gotta get them moved down here, because they're part of the 22nd Infantry, or 26th Infantry. They need to be down here with the rest of their division. Warm up sometimes. I've gotten, you know, it's not a bad defensive line. It's just I haven't got much way of being able to flank them right now. I mean, I do have some armor units, you know, down here. Some Panzer III, or I think some Panzer Jaegers and thugs. But as you can see, I'm dealing with armor from British First Armored, so I would love to be able to pull these guys back. But not going to happen anytime soon. Plus, I need to get units up here. He's got North Canadian Brigade. No more Canadians. Oh, fortunately, I've kind of got the river. So, but yeah, they're still going to try to sweep down there. This this flank is the weakest flank. It's the one that I, I'm worried about the most. Just because I overextended and overstretched myself way too far. Oh, these guys have been fighting through the night, and they're disrupted. I love to assault into them, but I just... Strength to do it, man. Shoot the When in doubt, shoot the bad guys. Technical Whatever. Oh, and I probably didn't mention this. Caught it looking down in the lower right hand corner. This campaign is 187 turns long. I'm on turn 34. Oh, we're gonna be doing this for a while. Oh, oh, isolated. Crap. Crap. Mm. Try to really push into here. Yeah. Bolt. Okay, that pushed them back. Get those guys moved into there, which opens up the supply line, so those guys aren't going to be... They're still isolated. They're going to be isolated. Yeah, this is... I if I should move these guys out. Get them from... I don't want to give up... Or do I want to continue sitting in at the... You know what? Let's hang, Let's hang there for another... 88 actually guys I'm going to need the anti-tank guns which armor over that's fucking there 
artillery. Artillery is in a good position down here. Mortars. They're not gonna do shit against the armor, but they're core elements. So I can basically anywhere up here to deal with the Canadians. These guys. All right. Dig them in. Dig in. I will dig and dig them in. They're in a village. That's a good defensive position. And they'll be able to get some support from them. Those guys are dug in. They try to go... I pull them back here and move there, which will... Pull those guys off. Ah, yeah, movement allowed succeed. All right. So it's not really completely isolating them because of a friendly unit. Look, that friendly unit is bordered by a river and a bridge. And the thing about bridges, you have to be in travel mode to be able to get across them. So I'm fairly certain you can't retreat across them unless you're in travel mode. So as long as I can hold this hex right here, Framfield, as long as I can hold that hex there, I think I've got these three companies trapped. And I really wish I knew British armor more. I'm fairly good World War II vehicles, but except, but you know, I German definitely know almost all the German vehicles by sight. American, Russian, hell, I can even identify the Japanese, a few Japanese things, but the British, I just never had an interest really in the British. And, you know, it's I mean, anytime I start reading on the British, my eyes kind of roll back in my head. Sorry to my Anglophile friends out there. I know. Bad, bad man for, for not giving Britain the respect it's due. But it just reading about the Brits have always been years in a row. So I don't know their vehicles. So I can't, you know, it's like, hey, what are those? Are they Crusaders, Challengers? I don't think they're Valentines. So I should probably look. But can't shoot, can't shoot. No hard attack value, so they can't. They're not disrupted, so I'm not going to assault them. All right, so all well, that little area is done. So well, let's go ahead to the Ose River. These guys want to secure those bridges. I want to make sure that the Brits can't get across. Oh, that's right. These guys are disrupted and fatigued. Gonna have to keep them on this hill overlooking Lewis for a while, which is fine because even if they push across, I can still block them. Now the ooh, these guys must have moved in second brigade. The fresh formation. Budge. All right, well I gotta keep trying to push these guys. They're disrupted and there's partisans. I shoot the partisans up. Yeah, and you can kind of tell just how, you know, the, the 26th is less concentrated. I've got them scattered all over the place, which is not really that good of a thing because there's not a lot of mutual support. So, you know, it takes, it, it, they're, they're so spread out that it takes me so long to respond anywhere that, you know, wherever the guys are committed to, it's like, all right, that's... That's what you're going to be, that's what you've got until you, know, you either knock them out or I'm able to get units into the area. Fortunately, I haven't run into a lot of British. So it hasn't been that big of an issue. Except for running into these armored units. Fifty-six men. Or assault. Push them back. I'm good with that. 
Okay. How are those guys? You know, part of me wants to come down here and try to capture this bridge hitting hole. But I think I'm going to have to try to flank around this brigade group. Support these guys. There we go. Okay. My biggest thing is I've got to get across this river here. One bridge right here. But, you know, there's five companies, four companies defending it. Now, granted, they're all disrupted, but still, it's going to take me in terms of blasting guys out to be able to free up these units to come in. Got to, got to get those, got to get those bridges across the, across the, just to secure my flank. Yeah, that's all vehicles and anti-tank weaponry, so they're bringing fire down from the top of that hill. Those guys are bleeding. They're going to be assaulting across the river. Fortunately, I was able to pull through. Well, they're isolated. Oh, they are isolated. Yep. Well, you know what? I think I got the strength to do it. Because travel mode. Again, we're attacking across a river at a bridge, and you have to be in travel mode, which reduces your attack strength in half. But I think all four of these companies. Two of them are attacking at regular strength. All the defenders are disrupted. Should be able to force the bridge. Yes! See you again, very low casualty. Three men on both sides as casualties. But I was able to force the bridge. That's really the only bridge right here. Once I'm across the bridge, now I can start pushing more. Let's take those guys and travel modes for attacking it. Across the bridge, and it also the two units that were right here got them down here. They're no longer going to be isolated. So yeah, those guys have them bleed off fatigue. Have them bleed off fatigue. Got a couple shots these guys can take. And that is basically all the divisions that I have. There are two more divisions coming. I've got the uh, Gross Deutschland. Panzer Division, and I think they're going to be landing up here at landing zone B, and I've got the 29th Motorized Division, which is going to be landing down here at Pevensey Pe Pe Bay. I know I butchered that. I but that's still going to be a couple days away. Um, okay, so all the divisions are done. Now what I do is I look, uh, and, so, and sometimes I... I I do this beforehand. I've got air support. I really didn't use a lot of my air support at this need for me to correct uh, my airstrikes in. I usually use one airstrike a day. So you kind of got to be cautious about how you do that. But I do have recon. Now, what I do is go through all my artillery. This is, this is just how I do it. Um, sometimes I'll use my artillery in conjunction with attacks. Most of the time, I save my artillery to the artillery for the very end. Uh, what? We've got an artillery dialogue we can bring up. Click on it, bring this right to the artillery, unit, and we see the little red highlight around. Those what range units are in range. So we'll go ahead and start bringing some hellfire down. Again, with the artillery dialogue, click on that automatic focuses. The 
Oh, with enrage. Ah, 17, man, that was good. Oh, yeah. And if they're kind of grayed out, they don't have anybody in range. And this is not the entire list of my artillery. It's just the artillery that have points left over that be able to shoot or if they're set up. Uh, oh, more artillery up here. Uh, do I? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Oh, maximum range exceeded by two. I guess they don't have anybody they can shoot at. Oh, you know what? That makes put those guys hook those guys up to their trucks and ready to move them out. Hook all those guys up as well. Now, I've got recon unit. Let's go back down. We've got this battalion of infantry. No idea who they're attached to. So, let's go ahead and call up the airstrikes. Go ahead and send a recon unit over them. Ow! Oh, Ooh. It didn't identify the units. So I, I, well, that makes kind of makes sense. I was hoping to identify which division. Like, nope, nope, you got to be right next to them to find out what division they're from. But like I said, they've been content to sit there for the last couple. I don't want to send my half tracks with the Machwagens up there to, to irritate them. Um, is there any other places I want to try to use? Yes, actually. I need to know how bad things are here in the West. Weld. So, go ahead and check that hex. Mm, excuse me, hiccups, what the hell? Now, basically, when you do an air recon on a hex, it takes that hex plus a couple three hexes out that it has line of sight. And so you can kind of see. So, pretty sure there's no more Canadian units like France, probably. At least here, maybe some of Let's go ahead and put there. See how much more uh, the 4th Canadian Brigade may be here. We've got one recon unit left. Alright, so nothing there. Yeah, uh, yeah it's 0, 0400. It's the morning time. So, and that basically, boys and girls, is current. That's that's me going through. I have no idea how long. I have no idea. Um, what else? End of turn then. Now I've got the computer set for fast AI turn. Basically, because if I didn't, I'd be sitting here for you know. 25 30 minutes while the computer goes through its turn, so I just speed up the turn and kind of keep an eye. Sometimes I get a little bit. I, am I losing intel, intel, uh, vital intelligence by not seeing exactly where his units may be moving or what exactly he's shooting at? Yeah, I am, but by the same token, I don't want to sit here for 20 minutes watching everything he does. I mean, I got a good idea. It's like, you know, it's not moving that fast, but. You know, it's moving fast enough to get the turn done, but not too fast. Oh, see, the Canadians are pulling back, but not too fast that I can't keep an eye on what's going on. And it only takes, you know, a minute or two to like, go through the turn. So I yawn my head off. Almost midnight. So, but yeah, this is this is something I, I, I kind of want to start doing on a regular basis. And it's real easy for me. I don't have to remember any rules. All I can do is just sit here and chat with people and talk about my plans and you know, give historical commentary without spending, you know, close to my nose in a book while I do this. I'm still going to do tabletop gaming. This is just going to be in supplement to that. And speaking of that, I'm probably going to be doing a football game, second season, I want to do uh, week two of the American League hypothetical as the uh, Oklahoma City Cattle Barons 
I probably want to try to get that this week. Uh, and also remember, I'm doing my drawing for a free copy, my 1,000 subscriber uh, celebratory drawing, I guess you could say. Uh, check out the video I did earlier last week uh, for a chance to win a free copy of Old School Tactical 2 with the Paratrooper Expansion, the Ukraine Map, and the Tactical Cards. All right, so end of the turn, and this is basically starting the beginning of the next turn. Uh, reinforcements have arrived. That's good. Air units available. Yep. Following units are isolated. So kind of neat. We can just click on. If it says if a unit's isolated, we can look exactly. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all that he's isolated. I need to get those pioneers across that ferry. Uh, five out of 19 headquarters out of command, which actually isn't bad. I've run, been running about 10 or 11 here recently a lot. Uh, three units, uh, three artillery units unavailable, 29 units of ammo. Ten units undisrupted or unbroken out of 31 checked. Uh, 16 units low on fuel. 64 units recovered fatigue. 98 units recovered losses. And one improved position. Uh, that uh, yeah, that improved position. That, yeah, I actually started that a couple of turns ago. So and what I'm going to do real quick, just so I don't forget it, since we already started the next turn, but we. You have reinforcement. So let's see what has arrived. Oh! Gross Deutschland has arrived. Oh, and the 29th motorized. So get those guys on the beach now, so I will... start moving them next turn and this isn't all of them there's going to be more follow-on units probably throughout the rest of the day with the lead element of uh, the Ghost Deutschland and the 29th infantry probably a good thing I got the 29th motorized down here 29th motorized because they are probably going to be going right up right up through here that's where they're going to be needed and since they're a motorized unit, they're at least truck unit. Hopefully it won't take me half a dozen days to get up there. Bunch of core units, recon and pioneer, some panzer, and of course Gross Deutschland landing right here. And what I'm gonna do with them. I think I'm gonna hold them in reserve. Try to more shift them this way and use them as kind of a rapid breakout when I hit the main line. There is there is something called the GHQ, the General Headquarters line. It was a massive line of fortifications that Britain had built uh, pretty much the entire length and breadth of Britain during the war. And I, you know, if I was a smart man, I'd look to see, alright, which cities were actually part of the GHQ and, you know, work my tactics around that. But, you know, I'm not a clever man. I haven't done that yet, though, but I'm probably going to save them Ghost Deutschland until I run into uh, find out where that division, where that GHQ line is that to break the line press on into London. That right there. 2,500 victory points. 500 victory points. 500 victory points. 500 victory points. 500 victory, a lot of victory points. That's the goal, right there, London. See if I can get there. I hope, uh, hope people. And we haven't had many viewers tonight. I think I've had three people at most watching, watching the, uh, watching the stream. But like I said, it's something I want to do a little bit more often. This one will drag down a little bit longer than I planned on, uh, mainly because you know, trying to bring everybody up to speed with what's happened in the previous. Three. I have a feeling I'll be able to get you know at least two turns in each stream from here on out. I mean, there's not going to be any set time. It's going to be whenever I have a little bit of peace and quiet around here uh, and and can get to it without uh, disturbing my roommates or having them disturb me. But we'll see, we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, I hope people enjoy. Uh, this is kind of a series I want to I just want to long-term continue with. I've got this game... Uh, Lion 40, uh, finish that off. Then I've got uh, what is it? Hold the gap 85. 
I want to do that as the Soviet attackers pressing into Germany in 1985, Cold War gone hot uh, in the Fold the Gap area. I've also got Korea 85, and I want to play that as the North Korean attacker. I don't, I don't know. I haven't decided really. Yet. For Fold the Gap 85, I am definitely going to play as the Soviet. Uh, but for Korea, I don't know if I want to play as the North Korean or as the uh, South Korean and uh, NATO defender. Well, not really. U.S. Pacific Rim allies, defenders, but that's months away now because I get about you know, maybe 10 turns in a week if I'm lucky. Like I said, 187 turns and I've only done five so far. So that's what we got. Thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism. In the comment section. I'll see everybody next time. Yeah.